Good evening, everybody. I'm happy to be here tonight to tell you uh, to highlight some of the accomplishments of the uh, facilities department over the two months of uh, summer. So before I start on what we did over the summer, I just want to jump back to the 22-23 school year. There were a couple of projects that the last time I spoke, um, we were uh, in the middle of and hadn't been wrapped up. Our 2019 $8.9 million capital project, um, we had a contractor in place who had an extremely large punch list, uh, including the replacement of about 10,000 square feet of stained uh, vinyl composition tile at the middle school. And he was, uh, he was making really little or no effort to completing this punch list. So uh, I worked with uh, Mr. Chow and, and our attorneys and our architects and we developed the completion uh, agreement which our contractor agreed to. We put a deadline date on it and uh, both parties signed it and this work was then completed on schedule. Um, the district was able to close out the project and file a completion report with the uh, New York State SED and we have now received uh, aid on that project. Oh, that's great. And also in 2023, we were required to do lead and water testing throughout the district. Uh, this is something that we have to do every three years. Um, I was a little nervous this time because the state lowered the acceptable levels from 0 .1, 0 0.15 parts per billion to 0.05 parts per billion lead. Um, and I'm happy to say of our 190 drinking water sources, they all have passed, and I have filed the uh, results with the State Education Department. Next. So the big project over the summer was our middle school HVAC project. Uh, we kicked off that work. Actually, we kicked off the work in June. Uh, the contractor came in after hours and got a jump start on some of the work, and then really went crazy over July and August. I have a list here of some of the work that was performed, but I'm going to roll through some pictures and I'll explain the work to you as we go. So this is the demolition phase. So we started on the second floor of the middle school and essentially every ceiling in every classroom on the second floor was removed um, and some of the corridor ceilings were removed. Um, there was a lot of um, big demolition and wall penetrations for new ductwork be put in place. This is a picture of some of the equipment that was put up in the ceilings. You can see the amount of ductwork, new ductwork and um, HVAC piping work that was up above the ceilings. All of the new classrooms we'll see on the next picture. Um, each classroom has a um, uh, heat coil unit pictured on the left hand side there. Um, they'll have individual control of their heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. And we'll also have a master control of the building with a building management system. And then of course, uh, to support all the new HVAC equipment, we had to uh, bring in new electrical equipment that'll provide the new uh, circuits required for um, both the interior and the exterior equipment. And these are just a couple of pictures of some of the new ele electrical work that was done. In addition to um, the HVAC equipment, we had a fire alarm panel at the middle school that was sort of uh, at the end of its life expectancy. And also it, it, wouldn't, um, it wouldn't support all the new relay points that are gonna be required, required for this HVAC equipment. Because understand it, when you have a fan coil or you, you're pushing air through the building through ducts, you're gonna have dampers in those ducts. And in case of a fire, all of those relays have to shut down all this equipment automatically. Um, so this is the new fire alarm panel that's at the, now at the middle school. So this is after all the equipment was put up in the ceiling. We have on the second floor classrooms and a couple of the corridors, we have all new um, drop ceilings and ceiling tiles. You can see some of the new ventilation ducts in place there. And we also have um, all new lighting. Jumping back to that slide for a second, I just want to say something about the lighting. That's okay. 
Anyway, so the, the lighting, um, if you remember when we initially went out to, to bid on this project, uh, the bids came in significantly over budget. So we did some value engineering. And one of the things we value engineered was instead of replacing all the lighting, we were going to have the contractor take out the existing lighting and put it back up. Uh, our bids did come in under budget, and I thought that it would be, uh, be wise to use that under budget money to replace the lighting. So we now have all brand new LED lighting on the second floor of the middle school, classrooms and some of the corridors. Can you remind me what the total cost of that project is? Um, $5.8 million, is okay. that correct? Yeah, about, about the it's fine. It's the, about the, the, bid yeah. came in, the bid came in at 5.1, and then we have um, professional costs. Yeah. Okay, the, okay. the, the uh, architect and uh, Clerk of the works and all that. Yeah, no, I was looking for a general ballpark. That's fine. So, five and a half to six million. Which is this is the six million dollar project that was funded from three basic sources um, that we talked about. Yes. One source right there. is budget money. Second source was the COVID funding from the federal government, and the third is the bond that we went out for. Each around two million dollars to equal the six. Again, mm -hmm. rough numbers, yeah. but that's where we're at. Perfect. I, I think I just want to add one more thing is that I think our presentation, we talked about it before, but with, uh, with uh, federal funding and then also with uh, the uh, building aid that we'll be getting, the cost to the, to the taxpayer is actually zero, mm -hmm. the whole project. That's lower than six million. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then just to touch on the project schedule moving forward, again, um, it's about an 18-month project from start to finish. So uh, we completed a lot of work over the summer. We actually did more work. The contractor was able to get more work done than he thought he was going to be able to get done. But now moving th forward through the school year, um, we're going to be doing um, work after hours on weekends and uh, over school breaks. And we're going to basically start now on the first floor, getting into those classrooms. Um, and then the work will continue next summer, um, doing the big rooftop unit installations. Um, we're also, as part of this project, I was able to add, uh, with some, a different funding source, uh, a partial roof restoration. We have some sections of EPDM roofing up there, rubber roofing, uh, which is a little over 20 years old and has come out of warranty. Uh, so we're going to do a recoding of those sections of roof before we put the big equipment up there and that'll give us an additional 20-year warranty on that roof. And the projected uh, project completion date is 8 31 So if all goes well, I hope to be standing up here about this time next year telling you that we're finished and um, everything's running fine. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and I just want to uh, go over some capital improvement projects that were completed over the summer with funds from our 22-23 budget. And the first one is uh, parking lot seal coating, a uh, crack filling seal coating and line striping. So we did the uh, large parking lot you see there between the high school and the middle school. We did the high school front circle. We also did the parking lot on the west side of the high school and all of the parking lots behind the high school. We installed some additional card readers and cameras. This was part of our uh, overall security upgrade. Um, we try to have as, uh, card readers on as many entrances as we can. It just makes it a lot uh, safer for staff to get in and out of the building uh, quicker. It also cuts down on people uh, propping doors open. And the camera you see there on in the right-hand picture um, is at the middle school, and that camera actually has three cameras in it and it gives you a full 180 degree view uh, around the corner of the building. Here at the high school we have all this, uh, all the black railing outside. It goes all the way across the front of the high school, wraps around the west side of the high school and goes behind the high school. We had that all repainted over the summer. Uh, in the high school gym uh, we had six backboards replaced. And the reason for this replacement is the new safety rules with uh, breakaway rims and also the uh, safety straps on the, you see on the top of the backboard there. 
High school gym floor was completely uh, refinished, brought down to bare wood, repainted, and new polyurethane. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Mr. Iorio, our athletic director. Um, all of this work that you're going to see in the high school gym was, was his design uh, and his vision. And um, I worked with him, and we got it done. So big out, big shout out to Dan Iorio. Also new, uh, new padding in the high school gym. This padding matches the padding that we did, I believe, last year, maybe the year before. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, at the middle school. Uh, this is. Um, continuation of a project that we're doing at the elementary school and we do this a lot where where if we need um, we need a lot of window treatments replaced at the elementary school so we can't do them all at once so we we try to pick the worst ones and do about six classrooms a year so this is the second year of this replacement process we also have some uh, repairs done at the BRS playground what you see here is um, Underneath a lot of the equipment, the slides and the, and the swings are poured in place rubber surface, uh, tends to wear and we get holes like that. So the picture on the left is, is the uh, worn rubber surface and the picture on the right is the repaired rubber surface. Uh, we also have some other uh, minor repairs that we're waiting for equipment on um, at this playground and we're also um, going to replace the monkey bars on the equipment, but again, we're waiting for the equipment. Uh, I've been told the equipment has a three to six month lead time, so as soon as we get it, we'll be doing that work. And then I just want to highlight some projects that we were able to do uh, with my in-house staff over the summer. We have um, four classrooms, I'm sorry, three classrooms at the Bedford Road School on the top floor that have these uh, high-pitched ceilings. And when the building was built, there was uh, no lighting was provided up in that space. And the classroom right in the center was kind of dark. So we added lighting to those classrooms. We had a couple of benches at the middle school that were in uh, very bad shape. So my in-house guys took off all the old wood, uh, repainted the metal structure, and um, made some new wood seats for those benches. These are the columns in the front of the high school, uh, original 1929 columns that, as you can see from the picture on the left, were really starting to deteriorate. Um, we did all the carpentry repairs and repainted all of those columns. Over at Bedford Road School, on the academy side of the building, there was quite a bit of cracking in the sidewalk and also on the stairs coming up from Manville Road took care of all that, uh, those concrete repairs this summer. Uh, jumping back to the high school gym, my staff, um, you can see the picture on the left there showing all the wall patching that was done and we repainted all the walls in the gym. This is showing a set of stairs behind the, um, the high school going to the natural turf field in the back of the high school. We had a pair of a set of wooden stairs there that was uh, pretty rotten so we tore those out and we poured uh, a set of concrete stairs and again this is something that we did completely in-house. <clears throat> this is the new uh, digital art lab, a renovation of the art lab in uh, the high school. Uh, we've patched and painted the walls, installed the new uh, vinyl flooring and we're in the process of adding electrical circuits and, and outlets for all the computers and printers that will be used in there. And the new furniture for this space has been ordered. This is something that's just ongoing uh, in the district every summer. Uh, we prioritize classroom and corridor painting. We do that all in-house. Uh, again, an another multi-year project over at Bedford Road School, removing all of the uh, chalkboards that are no longer used, uh, putting up touchscreen boards, whiteboards, and cork boards. Uh, did another six classrooms this summer. Our 
Our gym floors at the high school and uh, Bedford Road School were re recoded with polyurethane. We do that annually. And then just a picture uh, showing every summer in every, uh, every part of every building in this district, all of the floors are completely refinished. So what you see here is all the, all the furniture has been pulled out of the classroom into the corridors. The guys go in, strip, refinish the floors, clean the classroom, put all the furniture, clean the furniture, put all the furniture back, and then once it's out of the corridor, they do the same thing to the corridors. So a tremendous amount of work by the custodial staff every summer. And then I just want to touch base and put a list up there. I, do, I put this up every year. These are our annual and semi-annual mandated uh, inspections. These are all life safety inspections. And most of these inspections, I'm, you know, I'm required to get all these done annually or semi-annually. And most of them are required in order for me to get certificates of occupancy for our buildings every year. Uh, we also performed our uh, building condition survey um, uh, the beginning of 2023. It's now complete. Uh, this is something that the district has to do every five years. It's a complete architectural and engineering survey and analysis of our seven district buildings. Uh, and it identifies and prioritizes building projects. And we'll be using, the district will be using this uh, moving forward as a tool um, to support future projects. I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, we, meaning John, Steve, and I, are regularly approached by many different people about things that they want to have done in the district. And it's really our job to prioritize. And our first and foremost thing that we always do is safety. Um, what must we do? Um, and what must we do for safety reasons? So it's really a great team approach on so many different levels from people like our athletic director, our teachers, telling us things like, you know, the lighting could be better in this room to we really need to replace these backboards um, to all these different things. And then we creatively think about how can we get this done how can we pay for this? How can we actually like get it done? And really put all of this into a mix. So I think it really shows a couple of different things. One of them being our strategy really in prioritizing what we must do and keeping our building safe and making sure that we can pass all of those inspections and making sure that we can get COs for our, our uh, buildings. Um, some creative financing to try to get those things done. What we can do in house, what we need to contract for. Um, and really putting it all together in a way that makes sense. Even to the point where this current art lab renovation and really all of the different sources that come into making something like this happen. First, we have a schedule for technology replacement that we use and that we do. And then the second piece is working with the teachers and the principals and designing the space and then another piece is relying on some of our community partners to help and support that work. So in this art lab that you see, um, we are fortunate to have a donation from the Pleasantville Fund for Learning um, that came in and supported us with the furniture. And that is a grant that you guys are going to approve tonight. At the last board meeting, we approved two other PFFL grants, as well as a substantial donation from the Dad's Club. So I just think it speaks to how we operate and how we try to get things done here to make sure that our buildings are safe, that they're representative of the pride that we have in our district, and that they're really meeting the ongoing and forever changing needs of our students, um, such as this digital art lab. That's really a, a tremendous progression um, for our students to have that kind of experience and have that kind of a space to go in and to learn from top-notch um, technology that's up-to-date in a space that is reflective of that with updated and new furniture, 
um, electrical work, paint. I mean, there's so much that goes into these things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just really appreciative of the community, of the teamwork, of the talent um, that's brought to all of these projects. And I think that shines through when we walk through these classrooms and these buildings. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Just in closing, I want to uh, give great thanks to Dr. Dasaw and, and um, Mr. Chow and of course the Board of Education and the community for really supporting me over all my years I've been here and allowing me to do good important work. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.